Hey guys, good morning. It's October 16th, 2020. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop, and I have a ton of stuff for you today. It's gonna be super exciting. I wanted to give a big shout out to Kevin. It's his birthday. He's 47. And happy birthday to my father who's in heaven. He would have been 74 today. So 47, 74, I always feel like there's like some kind of connection. So happy birthday to him, and we're gonna get started. Last weekend, I sewed all of the Designer Mystery 2021 blocks. So the collection that we're featuring this year is Strawberries and Rhubarb by Fig Tree Quilts. Moda just released their market lines. We put everything that we bought on our Coming Soon page. Our kits are not all on there yet because we're still working on it. But I was able to sew all 12 blocks in 23 hours. So I did one Friday night and 11 on Saturday. So if if you are a beginner, you can definitely do this because usually it takes me longer. So this is block one. It's a mystery. These are blocks two through 12. You will notice that we did not use the brown. We felt like when we were designing it, it distracted a little bit. And this program is something we came up with 14 years ago. So it is, you can buy it three ways. You can buy just the blocks and you would get 12 blocks. In your package is a pattern that's full color and your fabric. You can buy just the blocks and then put it together however you want. You can buy the finishing kit. The finishing kit includes all of the sashing and the borders and the binding. And then the backing set is available also. So today, when I get done with work, I'm gonna run home and buy Saturday at 10 p.m., the whole quilt's gonna be done. So I'm gonna run home, and I feel like I have had so much on my plate that once this quilt is done, the heaven's gonna open and I'm gonna be caught up, which is not really true because I'm never caught up. But I really love this one. In my bedroom, I use anything that is in there that's quilting related is always fig tree because I feel like it goes with every season and I don't like to have to change out my quilts in my bedroom. Anything that's like a holiday or something like that, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit, one of the things I decorate with, I, <clears throat> sorry, change that out in my living room or um, like one of my front rooms. So in my bedroom, I always keep it fig tree. And so in my bedroom, I have a quilt rack and I've got three fig tree quilts and my side tables have fig tree. And I just finished another one that I'm gonna show you that you'll see. But this is very timeless. What I like about it, it is gonna go in my bedroom. What I like about it is it's timeless. It's not spring, it's not summer, it's not winter, it's not fall, it's all year. Um, we spent, we meaning Jocelyn, spent a ton of time designing this. I think it came out marvelous. I'm very happy with, with, um, the simplicity of it and the beauty of it because everything is so easy. There's nothing hard in the quilt. The quilt is gonna finish about twin, which is 66 by 84. And we have 12 Moda designers who designed the blocks for us. And I'm gonna read you all of the designers. We have Ann Sutton of Bunny Hill Designs and her birthday was yesterday. So if you love Ann, you should send her a little email and tell her happy birthday. And April Rosenthal of Prairie Grass Patterns, Barb and Mary of Me and My Sister Designs, Brenda Riddle, Brigitte, okay, tell me how to say it. Uh, Brigitte. Brigitte Heitland, Corey Yoder, of course, Joanna. So this is Joanna's block. Lisa Bonjean of Primitive Gatherings, who now has a YouTube channel, so check her out. Uh, Lisa, Carla, and Susan of Sweetwater, which is the people I get my labels from. Sherry McConnell of A Quilting Life, who you've seen on our channel several times and she's always doing free stuff. Stacy Itsu and Vanessa Gertson of Layla Boutique. So I also wanted to tell you in the finishing kit is going to be a notion that Joanna is gonna put together for us and you'll be the first to get it. So it's gonna be a notion and also it's gonna come in one of those packaged boxes and 
it's, oh, it's also going to have the um, one of the flying geese rulers. So we're going to write the instructions like we did a couple of years ago where, because there's um, eight, 240 flying geese in the finishing kit. Ask me how I know because I timed how much time it's going to take me to do that quilt. So 240 finish, 240 flying geese in the finishing kit. So we're going to include that ruler. It's going to come in a beautiful box and your backing will have a custom label that uh, Jocelyn is designing. So let me know if you have any questions on designer mystery. Um, it's good to ask me now because I just spent but isn't it so pretty? I don't know anybody who won't love this. It's so cute. The I know. Colors. When we, we we were struggling with it because we had the brown in it. And we just, um, you will find that a lot of the fabrics are reused over and over. But we just found that some of the prints are just so timeless. It's so pretty. It's going to, I cannot wait to get it here, photo it, take it home, and put it on my ladder at home. Because it's very mm -hmm. timeless. Mm -hmm. And... It'll be like a new quilt in my room to look at. Yes. All right. Uh, while we wait for more questions to roll in, uh, we did have new YouTube members joining uh, as we were starting our live stream. Our first YouTube member that joined was Mary Claridge. Welcome, Mary. Thank you. And we're going to do a behind the scenes look at the, mo the new Moda, the new Riley Blake, the new everything. It's probably going to be two weeks from now because... We just got all of that in and it takes Kevin and I a long time to sit and order it. So we're planning to put together our Moda order on Monday and um, then we have to have everything online before we do it. Mm -hmm. But this is strawberries and rhubarb. It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, a few people are wondering, is it beginner friendly? Yes, it's very beginner friendly. Basically the only techniques used in it are straight lines. There are flying geese, there are half square triangles, and hourglass blocks. That's it. And like a corner square or a nine patch, super easy. Mm -hmm. um, I did, like I said, all 12 blocks in 23 hours. So um, when I woke up on Saturday, I thought, you know, if I go to bed tonight with nine blocks done, I'll be happy. And I just kept sewing. And <laughs> what I did is I took Lori Holt's design boards and I just cut them and I would do five blocks at a time or three blocks at a time and, you know, do all my triangle paper at the same time. I was just super efficient with it, but sometimes that's how I have to be. But it's so pretty. I just want to take it home and have this hanging in my house. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just make it again and then hang that. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> so it's a mystery. So you can see block one and then these are the remaining blocks, yes. but very beginner. And if I thought it was intermediate, I would tell you. Mm -hmm. Uh, from Colleen Marty, since it's coming in a box, will we get it all at once? So what you will get is in the first month, if you sign up for the block, you will get the block. If you sign up for the finishing kit, you will get block one, finishing kit. If you sign up for the backing, finishing kit, and pattern, everything comes in month one. And then after that, you would just get a block each month. And some people just buy the blocks. Some people buy the finishing kit. We used to have fewer people buy the finishing kit, but now I would say about 80% buy the finishing kit because they have seen just how beautiful it comes together and sometimes they get upset if they wait. So this is one of those programs where we will order it in about six weeks and we will have limited amount and once we order, we can't add to it. Uh, from Elizabeth Glenbaki, what's the difference between the block of the month and the finishing kit? Okay, so there's blocks. It's a block of the month program, meaning there's three things. This one is different than the rest. You can sign up for just the blocks. You get 12 blocks. If you sign up for the finishing kit, the finishing kit does not include the blocks. It includes just the sashing and the binding, the instructions, a notion, and a ruler to help you with your flying geese. So if you buy the finishing kit, but you don't buy the blocks, you're not gonna be able to make the quilt because you won't have blocks. Mm -hmm. And we do that, I kind of started this, I wanted it to be similar to like one of those programs that you go to your brick and mortar each month and you bring a block mm -hmm. and you pick up a block each month. That And it's also a way, if you just buy the blocks, you can afford it. So if you're on a budget and you don't, you can't afford the finishing kit and the backing, you can still do the blocks. 
Uh, and then to clarify the flying geese ruler, which of all of that does it come with? It's the small flying geese ruler, I believe. Yes, and it comes in the finishing kit. Yeah, oh, sorry, it comes in the finishing kit. Yes. Lily knew the answer. She should have just answered. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was um, like, wait, what? I wasn't sure at first, so I was, so I was like, oh, I'll let her answer. Yeah, um, and so I love to use the flying geese ruler by Quilt in a Day. There's a small and a large, and I believe this one uses the small. Mm-hmm. I haven't made the quilt yet, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, and from Sheila Timoshuk, when will this be available? Starts May 2021 and goes to June 2022. Uh, and from Beverly Browning. Oh, actually, I'm wrong. It starts June 2021 and goes to May 2022. Yes. So we're already like several months out. Mm-hmm. And from Beverly Browning, for your quilts on the ladder, Kimberly, do you refold them so the fold marks don't stay on the fabric? And if so, how often? I don't. You should, but I don't. Um, I've been in the house three years. Those quilts have not moved in three years. I, I, you should, but I don't. But the one thing that I do do is I, when I decorate, I don't want to have to redecorate my whole house. Like I'm not doing that. So my bedroom just stays timeless. Like I don't put, I don't, like I do put on the, we have a little fireplace. So I do put some stuff on the fireplace that I change out, but that's it. Like I don't change my bedding. I don't change anything else because to me, that's just too much work. So, and I love fig tree. So just to have that in my bedroom all year works. Mm-hmm. All right. And before we move on, we have a few super chats. Uh, first one is from Valeria Bauer for 1999. Uh, and Valeria says, you are amazing and has a little... Uh, dancing pair with like a top hat going on. Thank you. And then our next super chat is from Rebecca Davis for $4.99. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. And then after that, we had a new YouTube member join Miss Clerk 007. Thank you. Welcome, Miss Clerk. That's a fun name. Uh, And then Dolores Johnson is also a new YouTube member. Thank you. And also Sally Johnson is a new YouTube member. Oh, she's been a customer forever. Oh, what? And then our next super chat was from JC Golick for $10. And JC says, love you all. Thank you. (laughs) And they put you all in like quotations, I guess, instead of saying y'all. Y'all. Next super chat was from Norma Calderon for $4.99. Thank you. Uh, Is it Calderon or Calderon? Let me know in the chat. Uh, and the next super chat was from Barbara Coyle for $5. And Barbara says, thank you for everything you do. I have learned a lot. Oh, you're very appreciated. Thank you. Uh, and then new YouTube member, Brenda Baker. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you. So I'm going to kind of move everything so that we can start socialites. Mm-hmm. So I'll put this over here. Can I hand this to you, Lily? Yeah. So you can put it over there. I'll put it over here. I just don't want my blocks to fall. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So we are on Socialites. Socialites is a program that Fat Quarter Shop put together with lots of designers that we love. And every Friday you will get a free pattern. So we're going to do each week. I'm going to show you how to make the blocks. So I'm going to get all my stuff out that I use. So in my binder, my socialized binder, I will go to block four. Take it out. This is the Spirited Block by Vanessa Gertzen of Layla Boutique. And her new collection is called Smoke and Rust and it's very um, manly. It's very different. I like it. I can show Vanessa's block if you like. Yes. Awesome. So you can see how she used, um, some of the times she used a couple colors, sometimes she used more. So pretty. I'm gonna show you the blocks. This is Teresa's block. It's from Quotation and Zen Chic. Now we have instructions for three inch, six inch, and nine inch. This is three inches. The next one is Deborah's. She's using figs and shirtings by Fig Tree Quilts, also three inches. 
you can see that one person sewed open, pressed open, and one person pressed to one side. So you can do whatever you like. I'm pressing open. This is Terry's Block. This is also Layla Boutique. Folk Tale. Sue used Shine On by Bonnie and Camille. And Angel used Cider by Basic Gray. So these are our sample maker blocks. I'm gonna move these aside. I'm gonna show you the blocks that I made using Homestead, which is now in stock. Homestead is by April Rosenthal. So these are my three blocks. And what you can do for inspiration is look at what others are doing. When I sewed mine, I just used two fabrics. A background from On The Go, I think. Ashley will have to answer. It's a, um, it's one of uh, Stacey Itsu's fabric I used, her background. I used Homestead and I used two fabrics. But as you saw, a lot of people are using two, three, four, five. Also Lori Holt is showing hers and you can follow her at blori1 on Instagram and she's using, if you wanna see more than one color. Mm -hmm. So this is what I have already sewn. I'll put this aside. And we're going to go ahead and sew this. So first I'm going to find my sticky notes. The first thing that I like to do is cover up. I'm going to be doing the six inch size. So I'm going to cover up the 12 inch and the three inch. And the reason I do that is so I don't cut the wrong size. So that's my first step. These are the two colors I used and I'm using for the sample All Hallows Eve by Fig Tree Quilts. I'm going to press these flat. Now I starched these so you can see that where my, um, it kind of sits up where I fold it over the, the line. So I'm going to iron and I'm going to use steam. And it will work any way you would like to. So some of the sample makers that I just showed you starch, some don't, some press to one side, some press open. And so that's the beauty of quilting is you can do it however you would like. Now you can see that when I have starched, they come out a little bit different. So my white is a little bit smaller and super smaller. So you can see this is how it changes. So the bottom, it's about a quarter inch off. Now I'm going to bring out all my tools and uh, Lily and Ashley made them neat. So I'm gonna see if I can keep them neat. And these are my tools. The, this is um, mostly what I'm using here is these square rulers. When I'm working with, so for example, when I did the designer mystery, I used these rulers instead of big rulers because I cut them one at a time. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm doing a six inch block. I'm going to look and we're making half square triangles. My half square triangle should be two and a half unfinished, which means two inches finished. So I'm going to use two inch finished triangle paper. If you are making the three inch, you can use one inch triangle paper. If you are doing the nine inch, you can use three inch triangle paper. Or you can follow the instructions as they are. The reason we write our instructions this way is so you don't have to buy triangle paper. But I'm showing you today what I do at home and I use triangle paper. So A and D, I need two squares. So I will cut two squares and I kind of just look at the pattern overall before I do anything. I never just get a pattern and start cutting. I always figure out how I can go faster, which is how I got those designer mystery blocks done. So I need to put these two right sides together and I will put this paper on here.
put a little pin and cut. I just leave a little bit extra. So that's my A and D. Do we have alphabeties? Yes, we can see you. So I need B, C, E, F. So my background, my B, I need two, two and a half inch squares. Those are going to be corner squares, or no, they're going to be regular squares, so I don't have anything to cheat with. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to cut two, two and a half inch squares. So I'm going to figure out the easiest way where I have the least amount of loss. So two and a half by five would be what I need. So I'm going to do two and a half. Oops. And so I'm using the least amount of fabric. Oops, I kind of went a little short there. Two and a half. So this one, I went a little short. I don't like that, so I'm gonna do a one and a half, which is my next step. So you can see that sometimes when I try to save fabric, it doesn't always work. So I need two, two and a half squares, two, two and a half inch square rulers, square, sorry, two, two and a half inch square squares and four one and a half inch. And this is how I cut. I cut individually. So these will be my B's. So I'm going to label those with my alphabeties. And I need four one and a half inch squares that are also going to be, they're going to be corner squares. So I will just do, I need one and a half. I'll just do one and a half here and see how many I can get. And so when I'm showing you guys what I do, I don't want you to feel like you have to do it my way. I just am showing you what I do and how I can go so fast. So this weekend, this is exactly the method that I used to do designer mystery. So you can see I have a lot left over. I can probably make another block with that. So there is my background. So I'm gonna put this in my bucket that has my scraps. So this is my bucket that I've been using and I just put everything in there and at the very end, I'll decide if I put this on a backing or put it in my scrap bin or whatever I decide to do. D, we've already done. Now we need from the print three, two and a half and four, one and a half. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to do a straight line here. Two and a half. And one thing that I do like to do is I always, if I'm going to do two and a half and two and a half, I will cut a five first, move to the left and do a two and a half. I've gotten so many questions on why I do that. I learned that from Billy Lauder a long time ago on Simply Quilts with Alex Anderson and just what I do. So those are my E's. And now we need four one and a halves. So I'm actually going to cut a one and a half from this. And I need three more one and a halves. So I'm going to do two here to kind of get this little section. And I do try to keep as big of a piece as possible left over, especially when I'm doing a quilt like this that has a lot of pieces because I might need fabric for another block or 
what have you. Now, if you would like fabric requirements for this quilt, you can find them on our blog, which is jo the Jolly Jabber. Now this, I'll just get rid of. And I'll put this piece in my box. And we will do one and a half. And at home, I do use this mat, which is my Kimberly's Cuts. The reason I'm not showing it on camera today is because I'm having difficulty with space. So this is what I use at home. It rotates, and that's what I use this weekend. So now everything is cut. And I'm gonna start. So the very first step is to make four half square triangles. So I'm gonna use my triangle paper, use a foot that's open. I'm gonna put my stitch length at about a 1.5. So if you're using triangle paper, you wanna use about a 0.5 less than what you normally do and stitch directly on the dotted lines. Going to cut around this. I cut all four sides on the solid line and then I'm going to pull the paper off. But I'm happy to answer any questions right now when I do this mm -hmm. since I'm out of things to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, we had some more questions that came in regarding Designer Mystery okay. from Marilyn Gallant. Are all the blocks in the Designer Mystery block of the month the same size? And if so, what size are they? They are all finished at 12 inches. Uh, also regarding Designer Mystery from Annie Jones, beautiful project. Can you just get the pattern to use with your own stash and will there be video tutorials later? No video tutorials and the pattern will not come out until 2022 because we write the pattern exclusively for the club. Once it has shipped to everyone, then you can get the pattern. Because mm -hmm. yeah, it's meant exclusively for us. Uh, from Melissa L, just a cute comment. She said, wish I could show you all a picture of my kitty intently watching Kimberly work away. Aww. That's adorable. And she put like a kitty emoji, then the eyes emoji, and then the laughing emoji. Piggy got in trouble last night. He had to sleep in his cage. What'd he do? So he's been like, when I leave the room, he's been jumping out of the bed. Mm -hmm. And then he goes and pees on stuff because that's what he likes to do. So last night I put him in his cage Aww. so that he couldn't sleep in the bed as punishment. Yeah. So hopefully he doesn't do that again. Okay. Uh, from Kelly or Tell, so is that one inch finish for the three inch? Yes. And from Shiba Sushi, how do you know when to adjust the stitch length? If you're using triangle paper of any kind or foundation paper pads, you'll just lower the stitch length so that when you pull your paper off, the stitches don't come out. Uh, also for the person uh, t telling us about their cat, you could share that picture to Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook and then we could see it after the live stream. Yeah, I've seen one last week. Okay, do you know where the little uh, wood pressers are? The clappers? Sorry, let me look again. It's okay. Oh, they're right under there. It's hard to see from this angle. Where? I can grab them. Where? Right there. Oh, I see them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I put my wooden clapper on there. I use this quilter's clapper so that this will just stay really flat. When I did the designer mystery, I used two of these because I needed them to be flat. So I'll put that aside. Our next step is our C's and F's are going to go on the opposite color. So white will go on yellow, yellow will go on white. So I'm gonna take these two, draw a line on the opposite side, corner to corner, 
And you can use washi tape or a Lori Holt seam guide on your machine so that you can just follow the line. But with this machine, since we don't have room to put a bed on, I'm not doing that. At home, I don't draw the line, I just use my guide. And you wanna make sure you're on the wrong side. And I'm using a friction pin. It will disappear with heat later from the iron. Some people don't like a friction pin. Um, if you don't like a friction pin, then just don't use it. But um, we live in Texas, so it's pretty hot, so I'm not really worried about the lines coming back. Because mm -hmm. the lines will come back at like, if you put them in the freezer, basically. Mm -hmm. But my quilts aren't, my quilt blocks aren't going in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. So we're gonna make four of these. So I'm going to, this will go on this corner. And this will go on this corner throughout. So what I will do is I'm going to put all of the oranges on the white first and then come back and I'll answer questions as I do that. So you just wanna put the opposite color here. I won't pin, I will, because these are small, I don't need to pin. If this was like really big, I would pin, but because it's likely to not move because it's small, I don't pin. And now I will go back to a 2.0 stitch length. And you wanna stitch directly on that line instead of to one side or the other, just directly right on the line. Uh, question from Arthur Booten. Could you cut your B and E at the same time and C and F at the same time? I uh, thought there might be a reason you don't and wanted to check. You can, but the orange uses more than the white. Mm. So to save fabric, I didn't, mm -hmm. but you can. Okay. And from Cecilia Schleicher, Finish size keeps confusing me in the half square triangles because the patterns will say two inch finish, but actually after trimming, they are two and a half. So unfinished will always be half an inch bigger. Mm -hmm. So in your pattern where it's right here, this is unfinished. You take half an inch off and that's your finished size. We also have a PDF that Jocelyn put together and you could follow that and that will help you. And it's completely free and we can link to that and that might help you. Mm -hmm. And from Stacy Ashley, why do you press your seam fabric to one side and then open when using triangle paper? Why not press them open to begin with? I never press anything open to begin with because it does not lay flat. I will show you an example after this and why I don't do it. So now I'm going to, to save time, I'm gonna put the whites on the other end so that I can trim at the same time, press at the same time. But yes, I can show you, um, I never press open um, to start with, and I'll show you. And then our next question was from jo Joanna Shoemaker. Uh, if using fabric other than what's matching to the ones we're using, how do you, desi how do you decide which fabric to use in each of the blocks? Um, you would just probably draw it out maybe or decide beforehand. Mm -hmm. And we have a coloring sheet that's available for download on the blog. Um, you can use that as reference too to kind of uh, lay out the fabrics you are using and pinpoint where you want them to go. And of course you could just do one unit and then if you don't like it, you can just cut, you know, mm -hmm. start over. I, I can't tell you how many times I do that. If I don't like something, I'll just redo it. And then I would just keep the leftovers in my little box and then I might use them for something else. So from here, there's two things you can do. You can either take a ruler and trim off a quarter inch away or you can cut. That takes longer. So I will use a ruler. And I don't, you can also stack them and cut. I, I don't do that because too many times 
I have cut into a seam or cut into the stitches. So I do them one at a time, trim all four at the same time. These are too small to save. If you have a bigger, you can sometimes save your cuts. I think this is way too small to save. So this will go in my trash pile that I have going. Okay, now I'm gonna show you why I don't press open to start. So if I was going to take this and just press open like this, it's, it's not gonna be 100% flat. I know that from experience. So what I do is I press flat, let it sit, press to one side, and then press open. And when you do it this way on the front, I'll show you. I don't usually do them this fast either because it's hot. So on here, if you just pressed open, it might bump. Like it might just not be as flat and you might get like a little crease. I call them duck pleats. But this way it's just nice and flat and I found that this works the best. So I'm gonna actually put this on the side and put my clapper on top. And I'm gonna do these the same way. Set my seam. Press to one side. I usually do them all at the same time. Then press open. This is what I have found to have the best results for me. But of course, like I said, when you're quilting, you can do it however you think works best with your stuff because everyone sews differently. Mm -hmm. Like when I go sew with Lori Holt, she sews totally different than me and it's okay because you know what? In the end, nobody cares. Nobody knows what you did and we're happy because we do it the way we like. And then I will press all these open at the same time. and try not to burn myself on camera. <laughs> um, I don't usually burn myself at home or anything, but on camera, I, I don't know if I'm nervous or what, but okay, see that kind of, look what that did. That what, that's not flat. Can you zoom in? Yeah. Sorry, it's that's gonna, okay. okay. So right there, look, watch one, two, three, boom. See, it's not flat, it's got a duck clean. Mm. So look, so I'm gonna fix it. Hashtag no duck plates. And that's probably because I had too many stacked at one time. Mm -hmm. And then we have a question from Shiba Sushi. They say, I love chain piecing, but since I'm doing the three inch box, I'm afraid to not back, stitch back when I am done before going to the next, next piece. I didn't, I'd like not to do that any tips. I did not back stitch anything. If you're worried, use a smaller stitch length. Mm. So on the three inch, I would not back stitch because that's gonna add bulk. If you're worried about your stitches coming out, just go down on your stitch length and that will be more, that will give you better results. So I'm gonna let that clapper sit on my fabric a little bit. So that's over here just kind of sitting. And this is what I do at home. I kind of let this sit for a little bit. Now I'm going to lay out the block. I'm gonna actually just lay it out and do it as a block. You can do it as two rows and then put it in or you can do it as a block. I'm gonna skip this step and go here. And I will lay out my pieces. I will do E and then I will lay out my B's, making sure these are right side up. And then I'm gonna pull these and I kind of look at the corner. Okay, I need a white here, I need the orange here or yellow here. And I just follow one corner. And you can see that this kind of does a little bow tie thing going on. But now I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look orange, 
orange, orange, orange, orange, orange, orange. I really literally at my sewing room do this. I literally look and double, triple check. Now at home, I would have a design board. We don't have a design board here because I don't have enough room. But what I'm gonna do also is, these look like they're not exactly two and a half. So what I'm gonna do is check. That one's okay. This one's okay. Actually, they're coming out okay. Just making sure they're not bigger than two and a half on accident. I should have done this before. Yeah, they're fine. Yay. Sorry. That's how perfectionist I am. Sorry. So now I'm going to look again. And it looks right. So I'm going to go to my machine. I'm going to change the foot. So the foot I was using before was, I call it an open toe foot. Technically, it is not called an open toe foot but I can never remember what it is. And then I have a quarter inch foot that came with the machine. So these are the only two feet I ever use when quilting, ever. This one came with the machine, and then this is, you can buy it separately, and it's just a jukey compensating quarter inch foot. I'll move this over so you can see. So I'm gonna put the quarter inch foot on my machine. and I'm gonna sew down here. I'm gonna chain piece. I'm gonna start here, and I'm just gonna sew all the way down. I leave a little bit of space between, and I do not back stitch. So I just put it right sides together. You can pin or not pin. Mine's looking like it doesn't need to be. And after I've done a little bit, do a couple more stitches and just keep going. Now from here, you can either press right now, or you can keep going. What I'm gonna do is keep going to save time. So I'm gonna just lay this back out. Everything's going the right way. And I'm gonna chain piece this. Now I've unclipped this because if you don't unclip this, it's gonna be hard to keep it together. Chain piece this. Also, I'm curious to see how many people watching are sewing along with socialites. So if you're sewing along, please comment below and let us know what fabric you're using for the sew along and what size box you're doing. Yes, I have been so impressed with everybody doing the three inch size. It's mm -hmm. been fun. Every Jocelyn told me, nobody's going to do the three inch size. I was like, you wait, they will. <laughs> so now I press one seam. Now, I don't want to start going all different directions. I'm just going to press inside. That way I don't touch this over here. So I'm just going to, and I always press to one side first. And then these are all pressed open. So I'm going to do that first and then go to the other side, set my seam, go to another side, and then we'll press open. Now, like I said, if you don't want to press open, don't press open. Okay, so now I'm gonna let that cool a little bit and finger press open and then just press. Now you will see that when I'm doing this, I don't rock my iron. I kind of just keep it really nice and steady. I leave it on quite a while. That's gonna keep it nice and flat. Turn to the other side, do the same thing finger press. If I don't finger press this, I will be more likely to iron. I mean, I will be more likely to burn myself. So. And I'm going to put this there. Put 
the other one here. Let that sit. I would say let it sit maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. A uh, question from Cindy Bratvogel Putnam. Uh, they were saying two and a half equals two, two inch half square triangles. Is that because it is finished at two once it's in the block? Correct. So unfinished means what you cut your fabric at or what your piece is unfinished. So this is two and a half. Wait. Yeah. Two and a half unfinished, two and a half unfinished, two and a half unfinished. Mm -hmm. When you put it in your block, it will be two inch finished. Mm -hmm. So because you use a quarter inch on one side, a quarter inch on the other side, you take off half an inch. Mm -hmm. So now I've laid this back out. I'm making sure that everything is looking right. And I'm going to put this right sides together. I will pin a lot here. So I'm gonna pin on the left and the right. And here, I'm gonna do polka pin. Can you zoom in? Yeah. Pretty please. So this is something that I made up and something that I do on everything. So you can see that you're gonna have two, these two need to line up. So I'm gonna put my pin in the very point and put it in the very point of here. It's straight up, my, my needle, my pin is straight up and down and then I will pin on one side. And hopefully it will line up. This side does not have polka pin. I just want these intersections to line up so I just make sure they do and pin and I'm gonna sew with a quarter inch seam. Remove my pin right when I get to it. And we'll see, okay, that I don't like. So see how that's bubbling up? That's not good. But let's look and see. And this matches and this matches. Ooh. So what I'm gonna do, my seam ripper was right here. Uh, right underneath in the middle section. Thank you. Okay. So can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. I don't wanna get very, okay, there we go. So this is a bump. If you don't take this bump out, you're gonna, when you iron, you're gonna have a little, you're gonna, this is gonna, this, you're gonna see that on the front. So I just take a couple of stitches out. And I did find my seam ripper, guess where it was? It was where I said it was. I had taken it home oh. <laughs> and put it in my little basket that I have that I take back and forth. And it was in the bottom of the basket and the basket was on the set. I just, it was under fabric. So now I will just sew over that again. And I'll just sew over previous stitches so that nothing comes out. And here, I could add to the bottom, but I think that'll get kind of bulky. So I'm gonna actually press right here. So again, set my seam, press to one side, and then press open. Now on the social lights, we have everything pressed open because it's the easiest way, especially with our setting. Our setting, a lot of blocks touch and that way you don't have to worry about if you move your blocks, that seams won't intersect. Okay. Let that sit, I'll answer a couple questions while it's sitting just so that it can stay. Mm -hmm. I find that if I remove this too soon, it's not really good. Uh, a few people have been asking if we know when we will be able to restock our fill threads. It's all been shipped. It, um, probably a couple weeks. 
Um, not everything is out of stock. So right now, our fill is 30% off. That's why a lot of it is sold out. But if it comes in before the end of the sale, which is October 31st, you can buy it. If not, it won't be on sale. Um, but yeah, it's on sale 30%. Uh, and then from Anne Marie Makowski, what quilt pattern would you recommend for the homestead fabric from April Rosenthal? This one, <laughs> because this is what my three quilts. So I made these three blocks, all three out of homestead, mm -hmm. and all three of these are going to go into a quilt. So I'm going to have three quilts. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of them with Jocelyn setting, and then I will take maybe one of the designer settings that. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm going to do one of Robin Pickens settings and so that I have three different quilts mm -hmm. and then I'll probably gift two of them because I don't need three quilts <laughs> and I really have no room in my house for any more quilts. Uh, we also have a quilt we're showing later on in the show that is also made with Homestead. Awesome. We had a question from Yvonne Suesmith. Is there a particular reason why you pin the outsides first and then the insides? Habit. I think that's how I was taught. Mm -hmm. And it kind of stable. I don't know. I think it's just habit. I think that's just how I was taught. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you have to do it. It's just what I do. But I don't think, like, there's no method behind it. I don't think there's anything behind that. It's just what I do. I threaded it funny, so I need to rethread it. Sorry. Oh. It's because I'm on camera. <laughs> it's hard. I have I don't have the best eyesight, so I'm never really quick at threading a machine anyway. Mm -hmm. I do think once I think when I think that's what I'm gonna ask for for Christmas is for me to get that surgery so that because mm -hmm. my vision is just So I'll see. Yay! I don't have to use the seam ripper. Yay. Oh wait, no, I do. See on oh. the back. Same thing happened. So, and that's okay. And I this happened a lot when I was doing designer mystery at home. Ooh. It will obviously happen more while I'm on camera because. Yeah, it's a lot harder to sew and. Standing it's up. Being recorded and standing up. Yeah. yeah, and that's okay. I mean, and I think it's good to show like what really happens. At home, obviously, I'm closer to the machine and I can, I kind of can feel around more. So now I'm going to fix that. Looks good. I got some threads. Okay, I'm going to iron. Set my seam, go to one side, press open. You can also use Lori's seam roller if you don't want to use your fingers to get it if it's too hot. And then I'm gonna put the clappers on there, cover it up, answer a couple questions, and then we'll trim it down. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually gonna go through a few new members and super chats. Yay! Uh, Bonnie Eisenhower, new YouTube member. Welcome, Bonnie. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Catherine Gaines uh, for $5. And Catherine says, thanks for so much fun. Thank so you. So, SEW. Uh, Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Lori Roth for $19.99. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. And then we had a new YouTube member join, Deanna Wilson. Welcome, Deanna. Thank you. 
And then super chat from Susanna Pasterick for three ninety nine. Thank you. And then one more super chat from Mary Ruth uh, for fourteen ninety nine. Thank you. And they're super picky. Yay. So to trim, you can take a square ruler and trim around. I used to do that and I chopped off way too many seams doing that, so I completely stopped. I don't worry if my block is exactly six and a half. So if I put it here, it's pretty close. If I put it here, it's less close because I'm at work. So let's see. Standing up, see how the difference is? Mm. There's a difference. Okay. And it's okay and it's not going to matter. In the end, that little sixteenth of an inch does not matter. So I'm going to trim around the edges is what I do. I used to do this. It does not give me the best results, so I never, ever, ever do it because I've learned my lesson. So here I'm going to put this, I'm going to put a rectangular ruler on the side. I'm going to line up one seam. Always do at least one seam. Trim. And at home I would be using my rotating mat, but just due to space. Now here I'm going to line up at the top and trim and basically I'm just trimming so that it's straight and there's my block so I'm going to show you all the blocks I've done so far with this fabric So these are the ones I've done in previous weeks. And so if you're interested in making these, you can watch our videos from the last couple of Fridays. What I will be doing with these is I'm going to make a couple more blocks. I haven't decided how many, and I'm gonna turn it into a project so that you can see, so that if you're not interested in making all of the blocks, that you can um, make fewer and do a smaller project. So I'm going to do something with this. With the homestead blocks, I am going to make the big quilt. But with these, th and that way I can kind of change what I'm doing. So this is that. But I wanted to show you this. This is block, let me look and see what block number it is. Two, I think. I think you're right. So yeah, block two. two. So this is block two. These are three inch blocks. I did 16. I used All Hallows Eve, scraps from my stash, and a, I think two Kimberbell oranges. And this is 12 inches finished, so what I wanted this is for a small table in my bedroom, and I'm not a fan of medium prints, ever. So I put those in the center, because what's gonna go right in the center of my table is gonna be right here. Ah. my tea so you'll never see it when you walk in you're just gonna see the dark smart Gina tell quilted this for me it looks great That's oh so look cute so what I did is I left these little leftovers straight from this box had this I think this is um, part I'm not sure exactly where this came from if it was just left over but this is a a label that I got from Sweetwater. I get one monthly and so I sewed a, let's see what size these squares are. These were three and a half. So I cut four three and a half inch squares, sewed them together with the label and you can see. And then I just added to the side and Gina was so nice to put together the binding for me. Gina. Yes. And I think this is Kimberbell Fabrics. So this is something else you can do with your socialites is you can do a quilt with the same block. You could put you could put 16 different three inch blocks and just put it together and have a 12 inch table runner for your table. So you can think outside the box, which is what I will be doing with these. I don't feel like I have enough blocks yet, but eventually I will. And when when the time is right, I will it'll probably be about a month or two and I'll turn this into something and then I'll move to a different collection. Mm -hmm. So I will put these aside, and then I'm happy to um, 
answer questions in a second. I'm gonna actually take a little break, clean up, and Lily's gonna come talk to you. And I'm just gonna kind of put everything on the side. Just my little block. I gotta find my mask. Okay, I found my mask. I'll be right back. Give me a second, everyone, to get up there. Do 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 intermission music. Almost there, almost there. Okay. Hello everyone. I'm Lily, uh, videographer here at the Fat Quarter Shop. Uh, today I have a couple things to show you. I, I brought this book so they can really can show you all later. But today I'm going to tell you guys about my journey to Nebula and I'm going to go to top camera real quick. I've got it here on my phone. There we go. And so uh, I'm a little behind on my journey to Nebula. If you don't know what journey to Nebula is, it is a skill builder series building up to the Nebula block of the month, uh, which is by Jaybird Quilts and To The Pink. And this week we are doing our cutting for this pattern, Rock Candy. Um, I believe out of these charm packs. Yes, it uses 18 of these charm packs. And so I brought this to show you all because I'm actually behind. Um, so I'm going to cut this this weekend. And right now, if you guys watched last week's live stream, I showed you all uh, my cutting and kind of placement for the Jawbreaker pillow. Uh, and so I'm working on quilting that this weekend as well. So that's why I did not bring that today. Uh, so that's what I've been up to. Uh, I did want to give a big shout out to Christine Ellis uh, and also ask that you contact me, email me, Christine Ellis, uh, email me at Fat Quarter Shop, or sorry, Lily, two L's, L-I-L-L-Y, at FatQuarterShop.com. And I uh, just want to give you a big thank you for the super chat you gave us the other week. Christine gave us a $100 super chat. So I'm going to ask Christine if she could actually uh, name a camera we got recently. It's actually the top camera uh, that we're using right now. Uh, it's been in between names for a while just because none of us here can decide what names to give it. Uh, and then uh, Margaret Hagland earlier had said, uh, then on one of the breaks, I should do a check-in of where people are from and what the weather is. So uh, weather here, uh, we're right outside the Austin, Texas area. And uh, did you notice my earrings came really uh, just Because back somebody in. said it. I thought they were I thought they were Christmas trees They're from can't... back here because you can't I can't oh, see you funny. as clear because of the yeah. lights. Uh huh. Um, so yes, I'm wearing candy corn earrings. Uh, I love the aesthetic of candy corn. I will not eat candy corn because I think it's it's gross it's um, so good but Kim sugar <laughs> Kim really loves candy corn um but just to give you guys a check-in of weather here uh it was cloudy and it's cooler today in the austin texas area um obviously i live in austin kimberly lives in austin uh but i am actually from arizona so fun uh little fact there but i'll let kimberly get back up here uh to show you guys the next stuff Yes, yes. Uh, do you want me to take the sewing machine off? Sure. Okay. Or just to the side. So yeah. So I saw one of you guys ask if I drink um, pumpkin spice. Yeah. <laughs> so no, the only thing I drink ever, I drink, I try to drink five bottled waters a day so that I get about 70 ounces of water. I do drink about two or three teas which is why I always take these breaks. <laughs> and then, thank you. And then um, I will every now and then drink a hot chocolate. That's it. There's real, there's nothing else I'll drink. Hot chocolate, iced tea, water, that's it. And um, yeah, that's it. So I want to just show you some other stuff that I've done. And so I sent this to Gina. I finished the Moda Blockheads 3. I can't show it all to you because not everything is out, but Moda will give their designers blocks in advance, and I knew Designer Mystery was coming, Social Lights was coming, and so I like literally just sewed two days straight, finished this. So the quilting is amazing, if you can see it from the top camera. We did a feather, so Gina always texts me 
Can you do the top camera, please? Yeah. So she did like a feather. Ooh. Um, and I, this is a block that I was making in the program and I made it wrong. So I sewed it in. This is actually sewn in to the backing. And I'm just gonna kind of show you from the top camera. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of it. So let's see. I don't wanna show the whole thing because it might show blocks that haven't been released yet. So I use the setting and Farm Girl Vintage that uses a combination of 12 inch blocks and six inch blocks. I use two different backgrounds. One that goes around the six inch and then a different one that goes around the 12 inch. You can see you cannot tell. And I added, um, it comes with an inner border and then I added the outer border. Lori helped me pick it. And Gina was so awesome to put the cloud vintage trim in my binding. It's almost impossible for me to put binding on a quilt this big because I have really bad, I have a really bad back. And so pulling that, if I'm sitting at my sewing machine and having to like pull it and pull it and pull it, I won't be able to sew for a couple of days. Um, Cause once I, it's like, um, I don't know, it was once I trigger it, I can't do anything. So I have started doing binding less because of that. But I love it. I'm so happy that Gina finished it. I am going to take it home. I used a mix of Minnick and Simpson fabric. This is a sweet water. I used some Ann Sutton fabric also. Like this is a Ann Sutton, I believe. So I just use a combination. I think it looks great. I'm very proud of it. I'm very happy that it's done mm -hmm. because it's such a big quilt. This week is block 40. The design is by Janet Clare. If you want to participate in Moda Blockheads, they have everything on their blog, which you would just Google Moda Fabrics blog. All of the patterns are free. The patterns are on the Wednesday. They're on the designers page. Then on Friday, they will put it on Moda's page because they want the designers, they want you visiting their blogs to find out more about them. So that is Moda Blockheads and Gina quilted that and the little table topper. And Gina keeps notes of what I, what my pantographs are. So if you want yours quilted the same way, you can just tell her, I want this quilt and she, she will know. And um, let me know if you have any questions on this because I'm gonna show you something else after this. And sometimes if I don't take breaks and ask questions, then you'll ask me a question in like three episodes of what I did and I can't remember what I did. <laughs> Uh, let's see, lots of people are saying, your quilt looks beautiful. Lori Holt says, Kimberly, your quilt looks so amazing. What a treasure. Thank you. And she, of course, helped me pick the backing and the front and the... Everything. Gina Tell said, I'm so glad you love it. I do. I'm so excited. And now I have a lot of... I have... I found that I have two patriotic quilts now. Oh. I had another one I forgot about. Because <laughs> I had said I had never made one. So Minnick and Simpson did a panel within the last 12 months. I don't remember what, I don't even remember the name of it, but it was a panel. You could just buy the panel and quilt it. So Gina quilted it and bound it for me. So I have two mm -hmm. Americana quilts. Now that one's just a cheater quilt, mm -hmm. but nobody who comes to my house has any idea. Not that anybody's coming to my house right now, but if they were to come, they would have no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Judy Matthews was asking, newbie question, is steaming on a wool mat a no-no? That is totally optional. Some people love it, some people don't. I never use a wool mat and I will tell you why. I am super hypersensitive to smell and sound. I swear, like I have always been. I don't like a lot of loud music. I don't like a lot of loud things. That's why my door is always closed at work. I don't like noise. Noise distracts me, I can't. But smell even more. If somebody was smoking, I can smell it 30 feet away. Mm -hmm. I can smell anything. A wool mat is made from like goat or something. Oh, a sheep, a sheep. Yeah. I can smell it. So when you put that, when you put the steam on it, I smell it, but some people love it and it is supposed to make your blocks flatter. I just use this instead. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you should do whatever. I mean, I will tell you wool mats sell excellent for us. They are one of the top notions. Mm -hmm. If I couldn't smell it, I might use it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show you Prim and Proper, just came out. Ooh, I know, it's so exciting. And we're gonna mail all of this to Lori. 
So this is the book. It's the brand new Lori Holt book. And it is so cute. And it has the spiral. So I'm going to show you everything from this. I know some of you have seen it. Lily has done two videos for us. One is behind the scenes and one is the trailer. And um, these are all quilts by Lori Holt. They use her brand new fabric collection called Prim. We're going to have a sew along. So the dates of the sew along are November 10th through December 29th. And Lily's going to show you the dates on the screen real quick. And everything is on our blog. So you can see if you go to our blog, it will tell you what you need to make each week. And you can sew along with us. So I'm gonna kind of show you some inside shots of the book. Everything is, um, Sarah did all the photography. Inside there are fabric requirements for this. You can buy this quilt kit at our website. And the quilt finishes at 63 by 75 and it's on the wall behind me. So that is the main quilt. Oh wait, I always go the wrong way. <laughs> So you can sew along with us if you reserved the kit in advance or the book in advance, it has shipped to you. That is the main quilt. And now I'm gonna go to the bonus projects. So Lori always has bonus projects. So the very first one is the Prim Star Runner, which is right here. And it's right here. What I like about this runner is it's very farmhouse style. So you will notice if you're furniture shopping or shopping anywhere, tables are more chunky now. So this is meant to be, it's 39 by 65. So it's really a big table runner. If your table runner is smaller, you could do this exact same design and just take one row out. Mm. So look at it from the front camera and then you can, you can visualize that. Oh yeah. You could point. do it skinny. You could do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And all of these quilts use the fabric collection prim and B backgrounds. And we have listed all of the SKUs in the book. And you could do this in any fabric that you wanted. So that's the first bonus project. The next bonus project is the Prim Stitch Runner, which is right here. I don't wanna show the instructions. <laughs> Sorry, this is the Prim Stitch Runner. In this one, she added pink rickrack. And this one is 26 by 61. And again, if your table is skinnier, you could do two rows instead of one. Mm -hmm. These are also six inch blocks. I believe, yes, these are six and a half inch blocks. So if you wanted to make this table runner, you could do that with using Farm Girl Vintage Blocks or Farm Girl Vintage 2 Blocks or Spelling Bee Blocks and you could change every block and have a table runner. So all of Lori's things come in six inch and 12 inch. She kind of, um, that's her idea. That's what she's been doing for years. So you could take this setting and use it with her other blocks. You could also put socialites blocks in here that are six inch and you could make it skinnier. You could make it longer. So always think about what you can do to a project to make it your own. Mm -hmm. This is the backing. I think this is my favorite quilt. This one? Of the book, yeah. So pretty. Yeah, and we're gonna mail these to Lori today so that she can have them. Mm -hmm. The next bonus project, and you'll see all this beautiful photography here. The next one is the Prim Cabin Runner. It's 32 by 64. And the blocks are 16 inches. So again, this would be a wonderful baby quilt. Mm. If you wanted to make a baby quilt, you just put it in half. Look, watch. There's baby quilt right there. Oh. So I'm always trying to think outside the box of what you can do if you don't. If you want a baby quilt, this is perfect. You just get some of your scraps. This would be so perfect as a baby quilt. I love it. And she did put the red in the center and the rest is scrappy. It's all prim 
collection, but it's scrappy. It's meant to be put the fabric wherever. She just did the red as the center. Mm -hmm. And this is the backing. Gina Tell from Thread Graffiti quilted all of these. So if you like the quilting in the book, you can just tell her I like this. Quilt it this way. And then the last item in the book are pillows. So I'm gonna grab these. So these are the log cabin pillows. And you can make basically that block. This is, the, these are all the same block. So this is like the smaller version. If you want it a little bit bigger, you add more strips, you get this one. You want it bigger, you add more strips and you get this one. So it's like baby bear, mama bear, grandma bear, kind of. Other way for the big ones, but yes. Sorry, I can't. That's okay. Oh, it's because of the camera yeah, when I watch flipped. myself. Sorry, let me fix it. There we go. There you go. Sorry, so this is the little one. If you wanna make it bigger, you add four more. If you wanna make it bigger, you add four more. So this is all in the book. I wanna make one of these. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the, the instructions have the envelope back for how to do the envelope back. And then this is the last project in the book, which is the center of the quilt. And it's called the Prim Flower Pillow and it is 18 inches. And she has her vintage trim in the binding. So pretty. I know, so pretty. I might have to make this. You should. <laughs> I know. After I finish Designer Mystery this weekend, I'm gonna. Yeah make something so this is so pretty so let me know if you have any questions on our blog you can refer to the sew along the hashtag that you can use we're going to be giving away prizes throughout it Lori's going to be showing photos and um, I would love for you to join in our sew along our sew along will not have videos because um, I know that you guys always ask that um, I I could literally come here and do videos 80 hours a week I don't have that much time, so, um, but this is all very, this is beginner. Corner squares, very easy. The, the, the blocks right here, the way that she makes them is you make them bigger and you put a ruler on top and trim down. Mm. So very beginner so that there's nothing on that that's on point or funny or gonna make your border sway or anything like that. So let me know if y'all have any questions on the book. It is 69 pages. This is the, let me show the back. Yes. So, it's so awesome. I will say it's mind boggling to me how, like I was at that photo shoot where we took those pictures, but then seeing it in the book, it's like, I, they just look so, like I don't, I don't feel like I was part of that. Because it don't? looks like so amazing that I'm like, there's no way that I was there. Oh, but you I was. were. And your name is in the book. It better be. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it says, where is it? Lily, Ashley, Jocelyn, mm -hmm. Sarah. Those were the four people at the photo shoot. Shelby mm -hmm. did some of the flat shots. And then the people who sewed all these samples are Nancy, Deborah, Angel, Terry, and Teresa. They all work for us. So awesome. And yeah. then the editors are Nova, Cheryl, who work for us, Karen, who is an outside editor, and Peach, who is in our Stitch Squad. Hey. And Lori is the designer. Of course, yes, Lori. But yeah, so it's, a, it's amazing seeing it come to life like this because I'm like, it's just unbelievable. Like, it's just this super cool thing that yes. it's just like unreal for me to feel like I was part of. Uh, okay, <laughs> anyways, just want to throw that in there from Jolyn Catledge is the prim quilt 100% pieced. 100% pieced. So what we do is I don't like to publish books that have applique in them. So I just don't. I don't have a lot of experience with applique. Anything I do, I want to be an expert on. So all of Lori's books that are done with us are all 100% pieced. All of her applique quilts are done with Riley Blake publishing them and she does those as sew alongs. 
and they use her so simple shapes that are her applique pieces. From Judy Matthews, what would you consider the brown table runner skill level to be? I think everything in here is beginner. Beginner, so let me show you how you do it. I don't want to give you sizes. But look, you make the block this way, you turn it on point this way, and you put a ruler on top, and you chop it down. Oh, yep. That's so cool. So it's beginner. Everything in this book I would consider beginner because everything is like a corner square or half, like this is a half square triangle. So like this is a half square triangle. These are just corner squares with corners. There's just a square with a corner on it. This is like I just showed you where you trim it down. This is half square triangles, square and a square, flying geese, very easy. From Gayla, is there enough fabric in the prim quilt kit to starch? Yes. And let me see. Okay, uh, Home Mom wants to remind everyone to hit that thumbs up if oh, you're liking what you're seeing. She thanks. said hit that thumbs up for Kimberly. Uh, Ellen Upchurch said, what fabric line are you using for the upcoming mystery quilt? It is called Strawberries and Rhubarb by Fig Tree Quilts. It comes out next year. So it's, it's a future collection. So I wanted to show you some Halloween projects that we have put together. The first one is, Cody put this little idea together where you can take Shannon fabrics, which are minky, get a foam pumpkin from Hobby Lobby, and Lily has published a video with this showing you how to do this. So it's a fun way a free video, we timed it, you can do it under 10 minutes. All you need is a foam pumpkin from Hobby Lobby, a hot glue gun, and some Shannon fabric. I will tell you that I burned myself when I did this video, and somehow Lily edited that out, and my, my finger hurt for like four days. So that is a free tutorial, it's so cute. And then we have this bag that Sarah designed. It's called Trick or Treat Carry Along Tote. Oh, so cute. Free pattern on our blog. And Teresa made the sample. So look, you can put your, you can send your kids trick or treating and put your candy in there. And if you're not trick or treating outside, you can trick or treat inside and hide candy and do it like an Easter egg hunt. Yeah, you could like hide it. This right here, I'm gonna turn it, yeah, I think it's so turned cool. the right way. It's the Spooky Delights Table Runner. This is also a free pattern on our blog, and Nova made this sample, and she added the cutest um, buttons Aww, the eyes. for the eyes. And for more holidays ideas, you can visit our Halloween Pinterest board. We've linked it below, and we have a ton of free projects and patterns. You can also save our pins to your Pinterest board, and it's a great way to um, pin all of your favorite Fat Quarter Shop projects in one place. Mm -hmm. So let me know if y'all have any questions on any of these Halloween things before I go on. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. Well, we wait for questions to come in. Uh, we had some super chats uh, from Patsy Wheeler, 499 super chat. Thank you, Patsy. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Mary Alice Medrano. Uh, and Mary says, oh, it's for $4.99. And Mary says, thanks for being awesome, you guys. Love you all. And she put a heart emoji. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And then we had a $4.99 super chat from Elizabeth Steele. And Elizabeth says, will, will there be enough fabric in the mystery quilt block of the month to starch? Absolutely. So I saw this on my couch and wanted to bring it. I decorate a lot with um, just, how do I say this? I put on the back of my quilt either a table runner, on the, sorry, on the back of my couch. I always have either a table runner along the side or a quilt folded in half along the side. I made this quilt probably four years ago. Mm. It is old but I have decorated with it every year since in Halloween. So this mm. is pattern is called Flying Geese Fancy. And it is 20%, it's 30% off 
in our shop. So all, like we said, our fills 30% off this month and all fig tree patterns are 30% off this month. Mm -hmm. I saw this on my couch and thought, oh my gosh, these patterns are on sale. I should show this. I have no idea what fabric collection this is. It's obviously fig tree. I made this a really, really, really long time ago, but it's on sale. So, and I love this and it's a great size to go on the back of my quilt, go on the back of my couch. Now, when you look at this, it's not Halloween, it's not fall, but to me, it matches my decor for Halloween and fall. Mm -hmm. So every year I put this out on the back of my couch and I think it's charm pack friendly if I can remember right. And this is a Bella solid, but I made this years ago. And so I thought, well, since it's on my couch and it's on sale, I should show people my quilt and how I decorate. So, um, but like I said, this is not Halloween fabric, but to me, it fits my decor. And so I've always put this out every year since I've made it. Fits great on the back of my couch. So just like Lori's table runners you just saw, those go great on the back of a couch or a recliner. So I'm always cold. So if you have like a recliner, you can fold it in half, put it across the back of your recliner. But I, yeah, I just saw this and thought, you know, I should make use of what I have. So we have some other new items I'm gonna show you. Ruby Star Society was one of the first companies to come out with face masks and their panel sold out right away, but we got more. So I wanted to show it to you again. Lily did a video on how to make it. So she's published that. So these are all panels and you can just follow along. There are instructions on the panel and we have a video on how to make them. Yes, that's also one of the few. Um, those flat ones are also from that same panel. So this there's one. like curved ones, yeah, and then there's like the square ones. Okay, so these rectangle ones we did not do a video on, right? No, but you can follow our safety first mass tutorial with that panel and you use the same technique. Perfect. And this is how it comes packaged yes. from us. So I just wanted to let y'all know because what's happening now is face mask panels are selling out so fast. Mm -hmm. And when we first got this, I wasn't able to show you because we sold out. So it's back until it sells out again. <laughs> um, then this week, we also got in a panel from Dear Stella. It's called Masquerade Face Mask Panel. So I'm gonna show it to you. It's, um, it's like animals, so I think it's, I'm gonna show all of them to you. So look, there's Piggy. <laughs> there's Shark, people like sharks. What is this, Lily? Is it like a knight? I don't know. That's what I need to put on my kids. Shh. <laughs> That's funny. Not really. Oh, and then it goes the other way, sorry. So these are, you can use these for the front and the back. Oh, the beard one's funny. <laughs> the beard one? Yeah. Or you can use you can be double-sided. Mm -hmm. There are no instructions on the Dear Stella panel, but you can follow our video for the safety mask for, sorry, you can follow the safety first mask video to make these. And Cody made some of them. Piggy. <laughs> piggy. Different kind of piggy. So these are great. They will, there are adult size and child size in them. And like I said, you can put them on, they can be double-sided or you can put a solid on one side. So let me show them this way. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh. <laughs> I'm going sideways. So I'm just gonna show how we did ours. And I do expect these to sell out, but we do have more coming on in December. I just think these are fun yeah. to show. It's a little bear. Oh. It's a little bear. Oh, that's funny. That's a zipper. <laughs> if you can read this, you are too close. <laughs> that's what that says. That's funny. 
and then it's a little tiger. So you can see there's bigger ones, smaller ones, and we mixed and matched how we put them together. Of course, you could put solid on one side and make more. But this is what we did. I just think these are fun to show. Yeah. And the shark, people love sharks. <laughs> they love to watch that shark week. We oh, also, yeah. That's true. I've never watched it. That would scare me to death. The yardstick box. I wanted to remind y'all that we have these. They are so cute. And I've been using mine in my sewing room to hold, I'll show you, things like this. So I just wanted to kind of show you how, because I've been getting really unorganized. So you can put stuff in here. I just want to show that to you guys again. Mm -hmm. It's so cute. And we have a new pattern release this week. It's called Rainbow Bot rainbow bright it is an it's so i'm a little p our little peas are named after my son peyton mm. we call him little p he is 11 years old and we still call him little p there will be a kit later using hello sunshine fabric this is fat quarter friendly so you can grab four fat quarters one fat eighth one and two thirds yard background binding and backing and do this in a weekend that's a new pattern Another new pattern we have is by Priscilla and Chelsea of Stitching with the Housewives. It is called Plaid Farmhouse. There are two size options. The table runner is 26 by 64. Again, very big, very farmhouse style would go great on a table or on the back of a couch or recliner. And the lap size is 68 by 72. So Ashley's gonna help me hold them. Yay. So this one is the the first one is the table runner. Teresa made it and Gina Tell quilted it. And the quilting on this is, I'm gonna show it up close in a little bit. It is chicken wire. This uses the Priscilla's Pretty Plaids fabrics that are brand new. And the kits will be available in November. So when we, um, when they designed this, we ordered the fabric after, thank you, after the first order deadline was in, so that's why the kits are coming later. The next one is the big one. Teresa made this one, and Gina Till quilted it. Let me show you the quilting up close before I move it. So now you can see the chicken wire. So you can, you know, if you want to make your quilt very farmhouse, you can do that, and Gina can do that for you. And. They will be having more colors come out in this collection. But super honored to be able to publish this for them. We published this under the It's So Emma brand. Should we flip it? Yeah. Flip it. Also, just so you know, it's kind of hard to hear you when you have the quilt over your okay, face. Okay, sorry. I'll talk in a minute. Super cute. So this is a uh, Priscilla and Chelsea from The Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. We published this under the It's So Emma brand and kits will be available in November. Thank you. And then the last quilt I have to show you is a brand new video that Lily released called Half Yard Jam. So this is a free pattern. You can download it on our website. It uses 18 half yards. So I kept seeing in Kimberly Stitch Squad Facebook group, what do I do with that quarter? I mean, what do I do with half yards? What do I do with half yards? Here's your pattern, completely free. It's 90 by 90 and we have a quilt kit. It's a big quilt. It's big. My back's gonna hurt now. Okay, go that way. Okay, sorry, oh, I'm gonna read this. It says, it's Homestead fabric. It's a short cut quilt. Jocelyn designed it, Sue stitched it, and Mike from mylongarm.com quilted it. Yeah, comment below if you guys remember the Jelly Roll Jam, which is a much smaller version of this. This is like yes. the giant king size version. Let's do one more. I like the white binding on this. It makes it pop out. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you have a lot of colors going on in here, adding a white binding will tone it down. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
So guys, that's everything new at Fat Quarter Shop, everything new that I have to show you. I'm happy to answer any questions about any of these things. Um, we do have a coupon for YouTube members only, and it expires next Monday. Yes, and you will find that in the community tab. Uh, so yes, just want to let you all know if you join before that, you will be able to use that coupon. Uh, let's see, we had some new members joining. Uh, speaking of, Nancy Cassetti. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. And Lane England. Welcome, Lane. And then we had a super chat from Patchwork Schoolhouse for $6.99 Canadian dollars. And they said, it's so apparent that you all put all so much effort and joy into all you do. Thanks for sharing that excellence with us. Thank you. I have had some of you guys say that y'all prefer the live streams the way they used to be, but I'm all about changing things up. I never keep anything the same in my life, nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm all about progressing, changing things up. I mean, some things will eventually go back to the couch set, but right now I'm really hoping um, to help you guys with socialites. Mm -hmm. So guys, have a great weekend. Happy birthday to Kevin, happy birthday to my father, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, everyone.